Hello, I'm Rachel Jones. I'm here with Rico Tice, co-founder of Christianity Explored Ministries. And we're here to talk about our new book, Finding More, Real Life Stories Worth Telling, which is a collection of testimonies. Um, so Rico, testimonies, uh, a bit of a Christian jargon word. What is a testimony and what makes a good testimony? Well, here's something pompous, but in the Greek and the Hebrew, the root word of testimony is uh, comes from the law court and it's a witness telling the truth. So there's there's that sense of, well, here is my story or here's what I witnessed. So it's about that. And of course, it's a testimony in Christian jargon to 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 what God has done. So it's it's trying to say, look, here's my life, but this is what God has done in my life. And um, I, I, I love the stories, but particularly if there was an overall theme, the overall theme is how Jesus Christ has become Lord, has become king in people's lives, and the difference that's made. And of course, the heart of Christian testimony is actually an, an advocacy of what it means to live under God's rule with Jesus as, as my Lord, and why that's both true and wonderful. So... Um, yeah, that's what the book's doing as I, I, I read it, and that's what would be faithful to the to the New Testament call of a testimony. And what, so what does the Bible say about testimonies? Is that Well, the, the Bible then picks that up, of course, and, and it's about people testifying to what God has done. So uh, when people come to faith, two things happen. Christ is preached, but internally, God does a miracle to open eyes. And that's transformational. And of course, Paul on the Damascus Road is the most amazing example of that. But actually, we think that is not unique to Paul. It's actually common to all Christians that God has done something very profound. He's opened our eyes to Jesus. And then people testify about that, what he's done. And, you know, the, the, and again, it's a bit of a legal thing. This is what God has done. What do you make of it? Mm -hmm. yeah, so. so I'm sure we've all heard people share their story. Yeah. Uh, but what is it that makes a really good testimony? Well, in John chapter 9, the blind man says to the religious authorities, I was blind, now I can see. It's because of Jesus. What do you make of that? Mm -hmm. And I, I think what I love about this book is that, is that anyone can read it and say, there's no question these people's lives have changed and they've changed for the better. Now, what, what, how do you, how do you, I mean, in, when I say change for the better, I think they're living lives that are more selfless, more kind, more helpful. Now, 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 you know, what do you make of the change and why did it happen? And they're testifying to the fact that, you know, for them, they've been transformed by meeting Christ. So Christ is preached. God opens blind eyes and does a miracle. And here's, here, are, here are books. And again, what I love about the testimonies is they're not just three years ago or five years ago. They're 16, 20 years ago. So they've stood the test of time, this transformation in people's lives. Yeah. Well, I mean, just let me ask you, just which one did you enjoy most? I mean, they're, 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 tell us about the range of people mm -hmm. and which one. So your... we've got uh, 11 different stories. Yeah. Um, and what I loved most, I guess, writing it was just the range of, of people I got yeah. to, to meet and to speak with. Um, so a guy that came from a Hindu family, yeah. a guy that came from a Jewish family, like former drug dealers, drug addicts, um, yeah. but also a just... Sloan, Sloany girl. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and also just some really ordinary people who were, yeah. you know, a school teacher, yeah. thought her life was pretty good, didn't think she needed God, um, and, yeah. and then was confronted by the reality of suffering in the world, and, and that caused her to ask questions yeah. um so a, a really huge range of of stories in yeah. here and it, it's just so refreshing and is to there see. anyone that stands out for you in terms of you went for the interview and you came away I, I suppose buzzing with it thinking gosh that was an amazing change or what a story anyone of i think i loved um so there's a lady called rachel who um uh, became a christian at, at yale she uh, was oh, yeah. a, a lesbian um and uh, the way that she just talked through that mm. whole issue of, of sexuality um, in a really winsome way. that just, it, I was just really impressed by the way she explained it, um, what God says about that in the Bible and, and how she's come to live that out and, and, and celebrate it. Yeah, what struck me in that chapter was the, the, the two things that finding Christ was both true and good. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Is that what mm. you felt as you went along? I mean, there was that sense of this is the reverse of what people would think, but actually I found this to be good and true. Yeah, so but both, I can't help but believe this because I, I can't yeah. escape it. 
yeah. um, but also a great a great draw to it yeah. as well. So when we're when we're telling our testimonies, how do we get across that sense of of truth? How do we go from you know this is sort of me and my life to equally this is real objective truth that you need to consider well i think if you read it i mean for example one girl nikki says the day after i became a christian um i had a terrible day at school and on the way back from home i met another girl who amazingly had also become a christian the previous day and she'd locked herself out so i think it was reality so i think key to testimonies is that you do just tell the truth and how it is I mean, I, I think that I think people want authenticity. Mm -hmm. And so let's not garner it. Let's just say, you know, what it's like. But but there is nevertheless a real story about what was I like before, what happened and what difference it makes. And, um, you know, um, Nikki's story, as you look at it, um, life hasn't turned out for her as she thought it would, you know, being a, a, a mom and having kids. Yet at the same time, she says, Jesus is so good and it's been such a joy to follow him. And I've been saved from hell. Mm. You know, her sister says to her when they're, you know, she's being a bit sort of off cuff with her older sister about it. Her sister eventually says, Nikki, this is a heaven and hell issue. Mm. And, we, you know, we, what we're talking about here is eternity. And that stopped her in a track. So I just think now that's pretty countercultural stuff. And the sister had said it and was straight with her because she loved her. But I just think just tell it as it is. You know, I think it's that reality we want. Mm. And I guess what what sort of situations are good to tell our, our testimony in? Um, you know, we might, as opposed to go into to another sort of straight gospel presentation. How do we how do we know when oh, maybe you have know more what? personal? I think angle? if you can just get out your own story. I mean, you know, some people say, should you, you know, is testimony not as good as a straight gospel presentation? I think there's a pain line to cross whenever you talk about the Christian faith. But the easiest way to do it is to talk about your own story because we're a culture that celebrates story and narrative. And that's where, again where this book is so good. I can I can see myself giving this book to anyone saying, are you open-minded enough to hear their stories? Give them a hearing. Mm. Particularly as we feel a little bit like Rachel's story that we're becoming a minority and is our voice being heard on human sexuality? And I can think of, I think all of my friends would respect the fact that they should listen to people's story because they want their own story to be uh, told. So just, yeah. To tell your story and, and certainly with me the two things I always say to people is you know, the 6th of August 1982 my godfather was killed in a cliff fall and I had no answer to that and I kept a diary in 1981 because I thought I was such a great guy to the world record my life and and I was ended up floored by my own selfishness and when a maths teacher explained to me that on Good Friday Jesus died for my diary on Easter day he rose so I could have hope in the face of not just my godfather's death but my own death that was transformational I remember thinking if that's true, it changes everything. And I suppose that's another thing about story, and of course you've done it all the time there, is if you're telling your own story, there are three stories we're connecting. There's God's story, there's my story, but there's the person's story I'm talking to. So to be asking questions and, you know, as you tell your own and maybe mention, obviously, talk about the impact of Christ, it's good to be stopping and asking. I'm seeing someone tonight at 9.15 that I was at school with and... Um, you know, I'm looking forward to hearing his story, but 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 questions are going to be key to that, and I'm hoping to be able to tell my own. Because mm. he's wondering, we both came from the same background, he's wondering what the heck I've done with my life yeah. doing this, and he said, let's meet for a drink. I said, okay, we'll meet for a drink. So, you know, it'll be interesting, but I'm going to be asking questions, not mm -hmm. just telling. So what yeah. would you be? your advice be to be someone like me? So I grew up in a Christian home. Um, my first word was amen. You know, that's how super Christian it was. <laughs> yeah, that's um, what about if you if you think you've got a boring story? Well, the thing about your home is I know a lot about it because I've read is this is is, is that it? Is <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah. Is it? yeah. And I thought it was excellent, and I thought it was a very profound book. I don't mean to plug another book, but I want to <laughs> yeah. say I thought it was an amazing insight into the sort of millennial generation. So thank you for writing it. Um, I, I, I think Rachel, the key question to ask is why are you still Christian? Mm. I mean, you grew up with that, but a lot of people would say you can't bring that faith of childhood into the real world of adulthood. And, you know, if you're going to do truth, you're going to have to give away hope. And why are you still Christian? Because, uh, you know, you're now an adult person. You're away from your parents. And so I suppose that that's a key question. Another thing I'd be asking is, who were the people that really influenced you? Because as you talk about those people... You talk about the truths they spoke about and embodied. Mm -hmm. So I'm always saying, what, why are you still Christian and who really influenced you? And then the third question is always, well, what difference does it make? Because 
an awful lot of people who've come from Christian homes have let the Christian faith go. Wonderfully, there are many who've been such a blessing to me who haven't and have brought the blessing of their Christian home, but also their own faith. So I suppose it's, I, I think it's those questions of why are you still Christian? Who really influenced you? What difference does it make? Mm, that's helpful. Those would be the ones. Um, one of the things I quite like doing on a Sunday, and maybe I shouldn't do this, but I always get my, I always get the Sunday times in the rugby season because you've got to read Stuart Barnes, as you know, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. uh, particularly the World <laughs> Cup this year. And uh, and I I was I uh, and I and I, sometimes I flick through the magazine, but actually, it felt some of these these stories feel a bit like a sort of Sunday Times style of interview. Is that right? I mean, yeah, that's definitely what we were we were aiming for a kind of more journalistic sort of style. Yeah. So um, we really wanted the feel that you were, you know. So I I went and sat down with them. I went yeah. to their house. We went for coffee. Um, we went for fried chicken with one lady. Um, so we really wanted the the feeling that you as the reader are sat there at the table with us. Well, so it's that right. You... The details. I mean, Larry, for example, he's got this table football, which I didn't know. I've never been to his home, but I mean, I do know him. He's got his table football sitting there, which his wife gave him and I think now thoroughly regrets giving yes. him and it <laughs> takes up the kitchen. I mean, yeah. It's... So it's just using little details like that to kind of build a sense of place and a kind of sense of a person's personality. Yeah. Really shining through in those little descriptions. No, you sense that, he, that his wife could read that and go, yeah, I am sick of that table football. It's now got into the book, Larry. So where are we going to do with this? <laughs> I've, we've, you've acknowledged I don't want it there. You know, that could be a bit of... But uh, it was your journalistic eye just drawing things out, which again, time and again, they do with interviews, don't they? That mm. you're not, you, you know, the person being interviewed doesn't necessarily know what's coming up. Mm. You know. And really trying to create sort of three-dimensional yeah. characters that you get to encounter in the book. Yeah, um, I mean, it was a sweet thing, wasn't it, with the inheritance that, that Larry and his sister got, that they bought that bungalow at the end mm -hmm. of the garden and that was there for his mum with dementia. You know, you just sense... You just sense the human being in there, mm. really trying to wrestle with suffering, being Christian, being a son. Mm. No, it was I, I. sort of felt myself in the kitchen, mm. waiting to play table football. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Rachel, one of the things I really enjoyed when I read this, obviously as someone who was involved with writing the Christian export material, was seeing the DNA of that material in many of these testimonies. So obviously people had done a Christian export course. And I have to tell you, as the author, every time I saw someone had done one of these courses, even though I think I knew it was coming because I'd recommended some of the people you spoke to, my heart would sort of flutter to just just to see that Mark's gospel would be amused. But just, I'd love to know how, you know, those themes of Mark's gospel, identity, who is Jesus, mission, why did he come, call, what does it mean to follow him? How would that sort of, how did you find writing that up and exploring that. Mm. So the vision was always to sort of unfold those truths over the over the whole book. So the first few testimonies yeah. focus on Jesus's identity, people grappling that and then we sort of focus in on what is sin and how does yeah. the cross and resurrection deal with that and then the stories towards the end are more kind of talking about what it looks like to follow Jesus and and some people yeah. who've really counted the cost yeah. on that. So that that really gives the whole book we hope a, a really um, strong structure and, and kind mm. of builds up a holistic picture of the gospel mm. gradually as yeah. opposed to you know trying to do everything all at all once, once yeah. um, so that was a, a real real joy joy to do and, and it has been costly for some people hasn't mm. it I mean the cost is profound and I, I loved reading that because you get so worried that that um, we, we, we aren't properly teaching the cost I think a lot of people in evangelism think that actually you say, who is Jesus? This is why he died. And then they think the cost is a discipleship issue. Mm -hmm. But it's not, is it? The cost mm -hmm. is a evangelism issue, isn't it? It's, it's if you want to come after me, Mark 8, 34, take up your cross and follow me. How did that, how did that particularly hit you as you, as you were writing? I, I, think, I think that came across in all of them, really. I mean, everyone got to the stage where they yeah. could see it was true, but had to decide whether they were actually mm -hmm. going to put Put their life on the line mm. for it um and the other thing that kept coming up was people would keep saying you know becoming a christian didn't solve all my problems um yeah. so i think that's important isn't it that we're not mm. giving people unrealistic expectations yeah. um and christians still struggle with um mental health problems or bereavement yeah. and and all of life's trials and mm. yet um each of them would would say they found they have found 
it's more it's they more. found yeah. um you know someone to walk with them through that and indeed some people knowing that life will be in some ways harder in this world but there is that guarantee through the resurrection of another world they're mm-hmm. living for and again that that must be interesting for the non-christian reading mustn't it they suddenly read and they think gosh they're living for an eternity here mm. i mean has that did that connect at all with any of the stories on that one um yeah i mean i i can think of one um couple who were in south africa and mm. uh she was just saying towards the end of the interview that um you know everyone who possibly can is getting out of south africa at the moment because yeah. it's so unstable and she was saying but they are investing there they're setting up a a school they really want to stay um and and people think they're crazy because you know if you could leave why wouldn't you um and you know she just said we're we're here because we think this country um we can help and um we're Mm. not we're not living for security Mm. here that's not where our hope is um, and she had just been, yeah, so struck by the, the resurrection of Jesus and the fact that there is a, you know, he's there, yeah. he's reigning in heaven, he's in control. Um, and that meant that they could, you know, put, take yeah. risks take in this risks, life yeah. as, they, yeah. as they live for him. Yeah, it was very striking, wasn't it? Real cost. And not just a school. I think they'd adopted a child, mm-hmm, hadn't they? Mm-hmm. So they'd really uh, said, right, our lives are to serve the new South Africa yeah. um, as well as the Lord Jesus. So Rachel, just as you know, as you put all this together, any big lessons just as you as you go away? So when you pick this book up, say in twenty years' time and you remember doing it, will there be anything you'll think, Oh yeah, I do remember that really struck me when I when I when I did this and pulled this together? I think the thing that kept coming up time after time was the the power of opening up the Bible with yeah. people. And um, you know, they'd they'd say things like, Oh, I you know, they they sort of apologetics kind of questions were important but Mm. they were never really what made the big difference the Mm. real difference came from looking at a gospel Mm. and really encountering the person of Jesus Mm. and so that was a that was a great reminder that you know that's always where we're trying to get people is into the into the gospel it's interesting running Christian Expo with leaders because um, sometimes they'll say look people don't really want to read the bible so i always say you know at the end of each they have a couple of chapters to read each week as they go away and they say they don't want to read it they're not really concerned with it and i say oh we've got nothing else to offer Mm -hmm. and i say they must go somewhere else if they want to find more but what we've got is the bible and that's where the power is now of course the lord jesus walks off the page of scripture but but i do try and i always try and say to the leaders yep well that's all we've got so perhaps they want to go somewhere else but if they want authentic christianity it's the lord jesus in his gospels get it open that's mm. what we're doing and um it's holding your nerve on that actually mm. now of course it, that, that what what i what what happens of course is that the word and the spirit work together so so god's holy spirit i mean i can't legislate how he will work but but as we get the bible open the spirit um does his work so i just say to the leaders let's teach the bible from the front Let's in small groups look at it. Let's read it one. Let's r- talk about it one to one, and then let, take it home and read it. But again, have confidence the Bible will do its work. Mm, definitely. Yeah, and it was very striking the way that you could see that happening. The testimonies again and again, isn't it? That they they got the Bible open and be struck by it. Um, so, how do you hope that people will use this book in their evangelism? Well, story is the big line in the culture. That's why I think this is such a super. a a book to have written because people's stories are what we need to listen to and there's a real sense in the culture of allow people to tell their stories so I think to give this to people and say look here are some stories will you will you please take time to look at them I think that's got enormous credibility and someone who says I'm not prepared to listen to your story well culturally at the moment as well as Christianly actually to not listen to a story um, is something that's unacceptable I've got to know your story as I try and interact with you. I've got to listen. And I think the culture's really got that. So this is a very timely book on that front. Mm. I'm going to give, I've just asked for 100. I'm going to give them all away and then get some more. And, you know, because I just think it's really striking. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm really hoping that people will be, just have their, their curiosity peak. So I'm, as you say, want to read yeah. about Jesus for themselves. And, you know, if someone gave me a, a book of 11 Hindu stories or 11 Muslim stories, I'd, I'd be wanting to, to know, well, what made these people tick and how has it changed their lives? Because actually that's part of trying to live in a multicultural yeah. society. So, so you know, 
what's unique, where are they at? So I think it's a great contribution on that front.